Rob? The voice echoed in my skull. Rob? Doctors in white lab coats rushed past me without so much as a glance. Come on, mate. It's time to go. I couldn't. My legs refused to honor the instructions being given by my brain. There's nothing you can do here. Fighting my desire to remain, I forced my legs into movement. I pushed myself up from the cold, hard seat and stood. Confident I would follow his lead, he turned and walked along the empty corridor and out through the double doors. Gathering momentum in my legs, I followed. I knew he was right and yet I still didn't want to go. I looked up at the pleasing face. Sorrowful eyes, just peeping from behind puffy red sockets, studied me. Please. As I walked down the vast corridor, I stole a sideways glance through the window to my left. It was not as gruesome as you might want to imagine but nevertheless, still as haunting. This is when the finality of the situation hit me. He was my friend, my teammate and my tutor. Now all that remained of him was a cold body lying on a bed covered by a bloodstained sheet. His burnt flesh stuck like a vacuum to the cloth. A split second's lapse in concentration erased him from existence. The lapse, unfortunately, was mine. The blame, I felt, lay firmly at my door. The collision itself had not been restricted to one car, including myself, three cars collided. I got away comparatively unscathed. I looked like I'd been locked in a room with an anger-ridden cage fighter for three hours but I was alive. I was in one piece and I was relatively coherent. Coherent enough to be discharged anyway. My burns and breaks needed monitoring but I refused. I just wanted to leave that place, I didn't care if I died the same day, so long as it was away from the hospital. The stench of death and pain of knowing scalded my eyes. My family were a plain journey they couldn't take away, so I'd been temporarily released into the care of Ross. My team principal. We sat in the back of the car for half an hour. Motionless. Silent. Neither of us knew what to do, so we just remained. Eventually it fell to the company driver to coax us out of the car and navigate us towards the hotel doors. After being ushered back into the relative comfort of my hotel room, I was left truly alone. In the hospital, it was a flurry of constant confusion. Doctors, nurses, engineers, family, anyone and everyone who could fit in the corridor were there. The press split over into the adjoining corridors until finally the doctors decreed enough was enough and called time on the circus. In that time I was never alone long enough to think. A constant distraction provided by those close to me in an effort to spare me from the truth. I felt betrayed by Trent, although I could hardly hold him accountable. The fault was my own. Ross spent countless hours trying to convince me otherwise but it was all in vain, I knew he was lying. I wanted the footage, my requests were denied. In this technologically dominant age, thousands of images are available at the click of a button. Too many to process. Eventually, I found it. I replayed it over and over. It played as if in my mind's eye. The memory slowly grew stronger, with it my conviction. I flicked endlessly through the channels and trawled through the articles, hoping to find someone to agree with me. There were few. Many, it seemed, felt that the injuries I sustained somehow counteracted my damaging role in the incident. A racing incident. An unfortunate series of coincidences conspiring together to create a perfect storm. A tragic accident. I got to one of the last remaining paper articles, brandishing the title, A Grave Error. This glorious article tucked away on a link in a message forum detailed the events microseconds before the contact. The unwilling culprit, myself. I printed it off. A constant reminder, the permission to wallow in self-pity. The fleeting glances I allowed myself in the mirror only provided a snapshot of the wounds inflicted on my flesh. I caught people stealing glances as I passed. Desperate to analyze the damage. I caught myself searching for ways to aggravate it. The tissue was healing. Why? 
I didn't deserve to be standing here, let alone for my body to be healing itself. I tore the bandage off, allowed the sheets to rub the affliction, anything to prolong the pain. Of course I never divulged the reasons why. People just assumed I was trying to walk before I could run. It couldn't have been farther from the truth. They wanted me to walk and I didn't even want to crawl. The phone rang. It never seemed to stop. 